I want to do a little response video. I did a big video on Meek and Jordan Peterson's definition of Meek earlier this week. I want to do a little video. Some of you asked for a smaller video. For a lot of people, and I've heard this, I remember back in college talking to a, um, a student of mine who had a boyfriend, and she said the reason her boyfriend couldn't be a Christian was because Jesus was a wimp. And Christianity Christianity teaches that men, um, men should be wimps, that men should be weak, that men... And, you know, when I, I remember hearing this, even as a college student, I thought, where do you get that? That wasn't, that wasn't in any way, any message that I had ever received about Christianity. My father was by no means weak. Um, he was, he was courageous. He was a big, powerful man. Um, he, he, he was courageous. He, you know, you know, he could, you know, he could even, you know, he could defend himself. I mean, this is the, the, the idea that Christianity teaches that men are supposed to be weak. I don't know what segments of the church that is alive and well in, but it was never in mine. And so when I hear people say things like that, I'm always like, where does that come from? So in the comment section, if, if that's an impression that you've gotten, if you've heard someone teach that, let me know where it's coming from, because I don't know where it's coming from. And so then Peterson talks about when he's reading in the Sermon on the Mount, he reads, the meek shall inherit the earth. And he thought that can't be right. So then he goes to um, some public domain resources, maybe Strong's. Some people sent me some links, maybe Strong's, um, you know, Strong's Concordance. And and then he comes up with this definition of, of meek. The definition of meek is being powerful, uh, like a sheathed sword, but not using it. There are there the the problem with that interpretation of Matthew five in the Beatitudes where Jesus says the meek will inherit the earth is it is blind to the context of that passage and so in my longer video I go through the fact that uh, Matthew five is a sermon on Isaiah sixty one just like Luke four is it is also a quotation the meek shall inherit the earth is a quotation from Psalm 37 so it's worth looking that up you have to understand what a beatitude is you have to understand um, what eschatology is you have to understand what apocalyptic literature is and then you have to make the decision which is not an easy decision about what kind of what what is actually happening in the Beatitudes and what is Jesus actually doing in the Sermon on the Mount? That's not an easy thing to figure out exegetically or theologically, and it's a, it's a hugely debated point within exegesis and theology. And and I would say that Peterson's point about um, a biblical in a biblical anthropology, men and women are not weakness or timidity is not valued. Um, is um it's it's all and i make the point about moses uh moses on one point comes down from sinai with the golden calf he calls the levites to him they take up swords they swords they slaughter um you know they they bring the camp back to order and they kill their own their own family and friends but then moses goes back up the mountain and he says you know it's my fault i you know punish me for the sins of the people and Moses is called meek, um, and and Jesus is called meek. But and so meekness, in a sense, if you associate meekness with Moses and Jesus, the kinds of things they do, okay. But that's not the definition of the word in the Sermon on the Mount. And if you want to understand that word, the best way to deal with it is not the way Peterson does in his definition. Um, part of the difficulty with using with using the King James Bible. Now I don't want to get into a big fight about the King James Bible. But part of the difficulty of using the King James Bible is that it was translated with a certain philosophy of language. And, and that philosophy of language is carried over in a lot of the public domain Bible tools that are available. Now, there are ups and upsides and downsides to different philosophy of languages, but a lot of that older philosophy of language basically said that the meaning, that the meaning is found in the word. And, and, a much more contemporary philosophy of language says the meaning is found in the phrasing and the context. And so how meek 
in the Beatitudes is understood is nested within the tradition of what the Beatitudes are, is nested within the within Jesus going up a mountain in Matthew, it's the Sermon on the Plain in Luke, is nested within the message of the Gospel of Matthew. This is all nested together. And so you can't just, you don't want to just pluck meek out of the middle, redefine it because you're going to misshape this entire dance of theology that the Bible contains. So does Peterson the way Peterson is using meek in the Beatitudes, I say no. Um, you're 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 bending you're bending that word to fit your context. Now your larger point is a good one, and I agree with the larger point. In other words, I agree with the conclusion. I disagree with how you get there using meek. And what I go through in my larger video is basically how you can get there in other ways and also preserve. Um, also preserve the beatitude and, and the teaching of that thing. So there's a real short summary of the hour and a half video that I devoted to getting on, um, you know, addressing what Jordan Peterson says about the meek.